But what can the Amish teach us about surviving today's world? Turns out a lot. So let's discover some of their secrets. The Amish way isn't about rejecting modern conveniences. It's about embracing sustainable living. Their time-tested techniques offer practical knowledge for self-sufficiency, sustainability, and resilience in crises. They prioritize renewable resources and use methods like crop rotation to nurture the environment. Learning from the Amish means embracing simplicity, hard work, and community. Our first stop on this Amish-inspired journey to self-sufficiency is the garden. The Amish are masters at growing their own food. It's not just about stocking up their pantries, it's about a deep connection to the land and knowing exactly where their food comes from. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, gardening? That sounds like a lot of work. And sure, it does take some effort, but trust me, the rewards are more than worth it. I have a friend, Sarah, who is a whiz with her garden. Every summer, her backyard transforms into a vibrant oasis of vegetables, herbs, and flowers. Even with a full-time job, she manages to harvest enough fresh produce to see her family through most of the year. So, what's the secret weapon in Sarah's arsenal and the Amish toolbox? Crop rotation. It's a simple yet powerful technique that involves planting different types of crops in the same area over different seasons. Think of it like this. If you keep planting the same veggies in the same spot year after year, the soil gets tired. It loses nutrients and becomes more susceptible to pests and diseases that love a familiar buffet. Crop rotation disrupts this cycle. By planting different crops that have different needs, you help the soil retain its fertility. Plus, it keeps those pesky bugs on their toes, making it harder for them to establish themselves and wreak havoc on your harvest. The benefits don't stop there. By strategically choosing your crop rotation sequence, you can actually boost your overall yield. Certain plants, like legumes, beans, and peas, actually fix nitrogen in the soil, making it more nutritious for the crops that follow. Now, starting your own garden might seem intimidating, but don't let that stop you. Begin small, maybe a few pots of herbs on your windowsill or a raised bed filled with salad greens. As you gain confidence and experience, you can expand your garden and experiment with different vegetables. Remember, gardening is more than just a way to put food on the table. It's a way to connect with nature, learn patience and care, and create a haven for yourself and your family. It's a tradition the Amish have cherished for generations, and one that we can all benefit from in our pursuit of a more self-reliant lifestyle. With a little effort, you too can reap the rewards of a homegrown bounty. Fresh, delicious food, a sense of accomplishment, and a deeper connection to the earth that sustains us all. Now that we've got our gardens flourishing, let's talk about keeping all that delicious produce fresh and flavorful year-round. Here again, the Amish have some time-tested wisdom to share. Food preservation techniques. The Amish are masters of these old-world methods, ensuring they have a pantry stocked with nutritious and tasty food even during the coldest winters. Imagine biting into a crisp, homegrown tomato in the middle of February. That's the magic of food preservation. Let's explore some of these techniques. Canning is a fantastic way to preserve fruits, vegetables, and even meats. By heating food in jars to kill spoilage-causing microorganisms and then sealing the jars with a vacuum, you can keep your harvest safe and fresh for extended periods. My grandma Sylvia was a canning queen. Every summer, her kitchen transformed into a bustling production line, filled with bubbling jars and the sweet scent of simmering fruits. Those jars filled our pantry throughout the year, a constant reminder of her hard work and resourcefulness. Drying is also a simple yet effective technique that removes water from food, preventing bacterial growth. The Amish often dry fruits, vegetables, and herbs in the sun, or in well-ventilated indoor spaces like attics. Dehydrators are a modern option, but sunshine works just as well. Similarly, we have fermenting. It isn't just about making delicious pickles and sauerkraut, though those are certainly a perk. Fermentation is a brilliant method that not only preserves food, but also enhances its nutritional value. The process creates beneficial bacteria that can aid digestion and boost gut health. Now, you might be wondering, how do the Amish keep all this preserved food fresh without a modern fridge? Here's another gem from their toolbox, root cellars. These are essentially underground rooms that utilize the Earth's natural cool and stable temperature 
to store fruits, vegetables, and canned goods. You don't need to build a full-blown root cellar in your backyard, but there are ways to adapt these techniques for modern spaces. A cool basement corner or a well-insulated cupboard can serve the same purpose. Remember, you don't have to become a full-time food preservation whiz overnight. Start small. Try canning a batch of tomatoes from your garden this season, or experiment with drying some apple slices. Practice makes perfect, and soon you'll have a pantry stocked with delicious home-preserved food, a source of pride, savings on your grocery bill, and a valuable skill in case of unexpected situations. Let's now talk power. We've established that the Amish are masters at growing and preserving their own food, but what about energy? Here again, their ingenuity shines through in their use of renewable resources. Renewable energy isn't just some trendy fad for the Amish, it's a practical and sustainable way of life. They've been harnessing the power of the sun and wind long before it came a mainstream buzzword. Drive through any Amish community, and you'll likely see a smattering of solar panels dotting the landscape. These panels capture the sun's energy, converting it into electricity that powers their homes and farms. It's a clean, reliable, and environmentally friendly way to meet their energy needs. Wind power is another key player in the Amish energy toolbox. Those tall spinning wind turbines you might see on their properties are more than just eye-catching structures. They're designed to convert the power of the wind into usable energy, further reducing their dependence on the grid. Now, renewable energy might sound like a high-tech solution reserved for fancy greenhouses, but the beauty lies in its practicality and cost-effectiveness. Solar and wind power can provide electricity for lighting, heating, and even running machinery. It's a testament to the Amish's resourcefulness and their commitment to self-reliance. So you might be asking, can I bring this Amish magic into my own home? Absolutely. Integrating renewable energy is simpler than you might think. There are a number of options, from installing solar panels on your roof to setting up a small wind turbine in your backyard. There are even DIY kits available that make the process more accessible for those with a little handyman spirit. Every step you take towards renewable energy is a step towards self-sufficiency and resilience. It's about reducing your reliance on traditional energy sources, harnessing the power of nature, and ensuring a more sustainable future for yourself and generations to come. But remember, just like a healthy life requires a balanced diet, a self-sufficient lifestyle requires a focus on all our essential needs. And that brings us to our next topic, water. Moving on to something essential to life itself, water. The Amish, masters of living off-grid, have developed some ingenious ways to collect, purify, and manage this precious resource. Remember, even the most stubborn elements of nature can be transformed into life-saving resources with a little ingenuity. Rainwater harvesting is a cornerstone of the Amish approach. They've devised clever systems to capture rainwater from their rooftops, channeling it into barrels or large tanks. This collected water then becomes a versatile resource for irrigation, washing, and even drinking. Speaking of purification, you might be wondering how the Amish make rainwater safe for consumption. Well, they often use simple yet effective methods, like boiling or natural filtration systems with sand and charcoal. It's important to consult with local water experts and follow proper disinfection procedures to ensure complete safety. Remember, the key to water management isn't just about collecting and purifying it. It's also about conserving it. The Amish are masters at this too. They've embedded water-saving techniques into their daily lives practices we can all adapt. Techniques like reusing gray water from sinks and showers for non-potable purposes, like watering plants, or employing drip irrigation methods in their gardens that deliver water directly to plant roots. Every drop counts. Setting up your own water management system might seem overwhelming at first, but like any skill, it starts with small steps. Begin by collecting rainwater in a barrel and use it for watering your garden or washing your car. As you gain confidence, you can explore more advanced techniques like filtration systems or even rainwater catchment systems for your roof. Remember, every drop counts, especially when living off-grid. In an age of power tools and instant gratification, the Amish approach to water management reminds us of a valuable principle. 
respect for and responsible use of our finite natural resources. The Amish are known for their resilience on hand tools and manual labor. While power tools might seem like the faster, easier option, there's a certain beauty and practicality to the Amish approach. Think about it this way. When you use a hand tool, you're not just completing a task, you're connecting with it. You develop a deeper understanding of the materials you're working with, and the satisfaction of completing a project with your own two hands is truly unmatched. In Amish communities, hand tools aren't just a collection of dusty relics in a shed. They're extensions of the craftsman's arm, integral parts of their daily lives. Tools like hammers, saws, chisels, and even more specialized equipment like draw knives and froze might seem simple compared to their electric counterparts. But here's the thing. Hand tools offer a level of control and precision that's hard to replicate with a power tool. Plus, they don't rely on electricity, a significant advantage when living off the grid. Building your own hand tool collection can be a rewarding journey. Start small with the essentials a good quality hammer, a sharp saw, sturdy screwdrivers, and a reliable wrench set. This basic kit will equip you for most household tasks. Remember, the key isn't to amass a vast collection overnight. Instead, focus on acquiring tools as you need them, learning each one's purpose and mastering its use before moving on to the next. And here's another bonus. Hand tools are often more durable and easier to maintain than their electric counterparts. A well-cared-for hand tool can last for generations, becoming a family heirloom passed down through the years, a tangible reminder of the sweat and skill invested in building something yourself. Embracing manual labor isn't just about building things, it's about building skills and fostering a sense of independence. It's a valuable lesson we can all learn from the Amish, a step towards self-sufficiency and resilience that empowers us to face challenges head-on. When it comes to staying healthy, the Amish turn to nature's pharmacy. They've harnessed the healing power of plants for generations, creating natural remedies that have stood the test of time. This knowledge, passed down through families, is a testament to the wisdom of their ancestors and the bounty of the earth itself. Take peppermint, for example. This fragrant herb is more than just a breath freshener. It's been used to soothe headaches, calm upset stomachs, and relieve muscle aches. Similarly, chamomile is a gentle herb, another favorite among the Amish, known for its calming properties. A cup of chamomile tea before bed is a common practice to promote relaxation and aid sleep. Sounds like a perfect way to unwind after a long day, doesn't it? Another plant popular among the Amish is the comfrey. This plant, with its beautiful bell-shaped flowers, goes beyond aesthetics. Comfrey is used in ointments and poultices to help heal wounds reduce inflammation, and soothe aching joints. It's a reminder of the power nature holds in healing and recovery. Building a basic herbal medicine kit is a great way to incorporate these natural remedies into your own life. Start by growing your own herbs in a small garden or windowsill planters. Then learn how to dry and store them properly. You can even explore making your own salves and tinctures. It's a rewarding process that connects you to nature and empowers you to care for your health in a more holistic way. Now we come to the heart and soul of the Amish way of life, community. The Amish understand the profound strength that comes from a tight-knit community. They've mastered the art of communal living, where everyone has a role to play and every contribution is valued. This isn't just about being neighborly, it's a core survival strategy. Imagine if we could create similar networks in our own communities. A network where we can barter goods and services, where a basket of fresh eggs can be traded for a jar of homemade jam, or an hour of carpentry work can be exchanged for a bag of homegrown vegetables. This kind of bartering system not only promotes self-sufficiency, but also fosters a sense of communal responsibility and interdependence, a safety net for when times get tough. So. How can we build this kind of community spirit? Let's go over some practical steps. First, start small. Get to know your neighbors better. It's amazing what a simple wave and a friendly hello can do to break the ice. Take the initiative to introduce yourself, especially to newcomers on the block. Maybe bake a batch of cookies and share them with your neighbors along with a warm welcome. You can also organize a casual block party or potluck a great way to get to know people in a relaxed setting. 
Have a surplus of tomatoes from your garden? Offer some to your neighbors. This kind of generosity fosters a sense of community and opens the door for potential bartering opportunities. You could even start a community seed exchange program, allowing people to swap seeds for different vegetables or flowers. Spark conversations and build connections by organizing swap meets or skill-sharing workshops. Think about the hidden talents within your neighborhood. Perhaps you have a neighbor who's a whiz at fixing bikes, or someone else who knows how to make delicious jams and pickles. Organizing workshops where these skills can be shared not only strengthens the community, but also empowers individuals with valuable knowledge. While the Amish are known for their rejection of modern technology, there's no shame in leveraging technology to build your community network. Create a neighborhood social media group or online forum to share information, swap resources, and organize events. This can be a great way to connect with busy working professionals who might not have time for long chats over the fence, but still value community connection. These small steps can go a long way in building a strong and resilient community. Remember, building a community isn't just about exchanging goods and services. It's about creating a support network, a safety net of sorts, for when life throws curveballs. It's about knowing that you have people you can rely on, and who can rely on you. After all, as the saying goes, we are stronger together. Now let's talk about something that might surprise you, simple living. The Amish lifestyle is a testament to the power of this approach. Their philosophy isn't about deprivation, it's about focusing on what truly matters. It's about removing the excess so that the essential aspects of life can shine through. In our modern world, we often find ourselves buried under a mountain of stuff. Clothes we never wear, gadgets we never use, and knickknacks that collect dust. The Amish approach to minimalism offers valuable lessons on how to declutter our lives, both physically and mentally. Here's where you can start. Take a good, honest look around your home. What items do you use every single day? What things have been gathering dust in the back of your closet for the past year? Chances are, if you haven't used it in a long time, you probably don't need it. But decluttering isn't just about getting rid of stuff. It's about making room for what truly adds value to your life. For the Amish, this includes family, community, and a deep connection to the land. This philosophy can also enhance your own prepping journey, by focusing on the essentials, you can ensure you have everything you need to survive without being weighed down by unnecessary possessions. A minimalist approach can help you become more self-reliant, adaptable, and ultimately more resilient. So, consider embracing a simpler way of life. Clear out the clutter, focus on the essentials, and remember the wise words of Leonardo da Vinci. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It's true, sometimes less is more. By incorporating even a few of these Amish techniques into your life, you can build a more self-sufficient, resourceful, and connected way of living. Remember, these principles aren't meant to be a rigid rule book, but rather a source of inspiration. Adapt them to your own needs and circumstances, and create a life that allows you to thrive, not just survive. Building a home is a monumental task for most of us, but not for the Amish. They've perfected the art of constructing sturdy and beautiful dwellings using sustainable and local materials. And guess what? They do it all without relying on modern power tools. The Amish have a deep respect for nature, and it shows in their choice of building materials. They use timber from local woods, clay from nearby rivers, and stones from surrounding fields. This not only makes their homes eco-friendly, but it also helps them blend seamlessly with the natural landscape. But building a home isn't just the first step. Maintenance is equally important, and the Amish are diligent in keeping their homes in tip-top shape. They regularly inspect and repair their structures, ensuring they remain strong and weatherproofed, ready to withstand the test of time. After all, a well-maintained home can weather any storm, both literally and figuratively. So, how can you incorporate some of these Amish techniques into your own home projects? Let's go over some ideas. First, source local materials as much as possible. Not only is this sustainable and environmentally friendly, but it can also be more cost-effective than relying on big box stores. Consider reclaimed wood, recycled bricks, or even straw bale construction for a truly unique and eco-friendly approach. Learn to do minor repairs yourself. 
There's a certain satisfaction that comes with fixing things yourself. Start small, a leaky faucet, a loose doorknob, or patching up a hole in the wall. There are countless online tutorials and DIY guides that can walk you through basic repairs. Not only will you save money, but you'll also gain valuable skills and a sense of self-reliance. Also, make maintenance a regular part of your routine. It might seem like a chore, but trust me, it's worth it in the long run. Schedule regular inspections of your roof, gutters, foundation, and plumbing. By addressing small issues before they become major problems, you can save yourself a lot of time, money, and stress in the future. Remember, a well-maintained home is more than just a shelter. It's a fortress in uncertain times. And who wouldn't want a strong, secure place to call home, especially if challenges arise? There's a special kind of magic that happens when you cook and bake from scratch, and the Amish community has been doing it for generations. Let me tell you, there's a lot we can learn from their traditions. For starters, cooking without prepackaged ingredients gives you complete control over what goes into your food. You're cutting out all those preservatives, artificial flavors, and hidden sugars that lurk in processed foods. This not only makes your meals healthier, but also allows the natural flavors of the ingredients to shine through. Trust me, the difference is incredible. And then there are those mouth-watering Amish recipes, breads, pies, stews, jams, you name it. The Amish have a knack for creating wholesome, comforting food that nourishes both body and soul. Think warm apple pie bursting with fresh seasonal fruit, or a hearty stew simmered with love for hours, filling the kitchen with an aroma that makes your stomach rumble. It's pure comfort food magic. But it's not just about the recipes, it's about the techniques too. From kneading dough by hand to slowly simmering broths, these are skills that require time and patience to master. It might seem daunting at first, but trust me, the rewards are worth it. Once you get the hang of these methods, you'll discover a depth of flavor and a quality of food that simply can't be replicated by any quick-fix shortcut. Plus, there's a certain satisfaction that comes with creating something delicious from scratch, knowing exactly what went into it. So, how can you incorporate these methods into your own daily routine? Start small. Maybe bake a simple loaf of bread or make a pot of soup using fresh ingredients and basic techniques. There are tons of online resources and cookbooks dedicated to Amish recipes and cooking styles. You'll be surprised at how easy and rewarding it can be. Remember, cooking from scratch like the Amish isn't just about being healthier. It's about connecting with your food, enjoying the process, and creating delicious meals that nourish your family and friends. It's a skill that will bring you joy for years to come. The Amish are the type of people who know how to survive even in the toughest of situations. But who are the people who won't even last 48 hours in a disaster situation? Click the video on screen now to find out.